Hello everyone, my name is David Bauer and I'll be presenting our paper Photon Field Networks for Dynamic Real-Time Volumetric Global Illumination. And this work was done together with my colleague Chi Wu and our advisor Quan Liu Ma. Um, all of us are part of VIDI, the Visualization and Interface Design Lab at UC Davis. And with this short introduction, let's get started. In this work, we develop a neural rendering technique to cache indirect radiance fields using fast neural networks. With the help of these fields, we can produce convincing volumetric global illumination effects at a fraction of the cost of conventional rendering techniques. The name photon fields is derived from the fact that we use photon traces as a data source to train the neural fields. And here we see an example of what this method can do. These two views of a volumetric scan have been rendered uh, with our technique and the global illumination effects in these shots are realized using our photon field technique. In this demo, you can also see that we also support non-isotropic scattering effects uh, and those are baked right into the neural representation and can be changed in real time. In this presentation, I want to talk about what motivated this work, how we realized it and how the results hold up against existing rendering techniques. And finally, I will go over some limitations and summarize our contributions. I'll make a very broad statement here, but I think uh, many will be able to relate. When it comes to volumetric rendering, we want high visual quality, meaning photorealistic rendering with global illumination, and we want that as fast as possible to be able to interact with the visualization in real time and explore the volume interactively. Unfortunately, many rendering techniques try to focus on only one of those two uh, aspects, um, or in many cases, we just don't have the resources needed to achieve both. So we thought, can we create global illumination effects using neural networks and can we do it faster than traditional rendering techniques? So for this project, we develop photon field networks, which are a dynamic neural parametrization of volume radi radiance. A neural network, which we call photon field, caches radiance that we compute from photon traces. And we do this for photon traces computed with different scattering coefficients to capture a range of non-isotropic scattering behavior. And we can then reconstruct that radiance by parametrizing and querying the photon field using sample positions, directions, and desired scattering coefficient. And finally, we can integrate these queries into a renderer. We choose a path tracer to replace the computation of multiple scattering. Let's look at how we train these representations. So to train a photon field, we start with a volume dataset as represented here by this cloud. We then add a light source to the scene and note that we support multiple lights. Uh, we show a single one here for illustration purposes only. And in the first step, we generate photons originating at the light source. We then track them through the scene into the volume. And at certain points, the photons interact with the medium. Where and how often that happens depends on several factors, including the volume density and scattering coefficient. At each point of interaction with the medium, we record the photon's location, energy, and traversal direction. This should sound familiar in case you've ever worked with photon mapping. Once we are done tracing the photons through the medium, we are left with a photon map that contains valuable information about the light transport inside of the volume. So rendering photon maps can be a costly process. And this is why we introduce an intermediate representation that will help us render the field more efficiently. So here we introduce a neural model, uh, which will serve as our photon field network. To train it, we now randomly sample the photon map by choosing arbitrary locations and finding sets of nearest neighbors around the sample using range queries. These samples are then processed. We use a radiance estimate technique to find the amount of light that travels through this point for a randomly chosen direction. And the resulting quantity represents the network target, what is learned. And we use the information about sample position and direction as inputs to the network. So here we see the output of the photon field. It's a biased estimate of the fraction of indirect light, Li, that leaves a point x in direction omega. And we can therefore say that the photon field implicitly represents the view-dependent radiance as a 5D vector valued function. In practice, we add an additional parameter g that parameterizes the scattering coefficient of the phase function to control the isotropy of the output. 
Uh, this addition effectively makes the photon field a 6D function, and for details on the phase function awareness of our photon fields, please check out the paper. So now that we have the trained model, we can now use this information about indirect radiance in a rendering application. So for our proof of concept implementation, we have a path tracer, and we trace the first hit that we can see here on the left, direct light contribution as always. And instead of extending paths beyond this first hit, we rely on the photon field shown on the right to provide an estimate of global illumination. To create the final frame, we combine both the direct and indirect contribution and get the fully rendered image with global illumination estimate included. We wrote our path tracer as a wavefront integrator so that for each frame we can gather all the samples and process them in batches in the neural network and this makes better use of the available resources on the GPU and helps process the frame in real time. Now let's look at some visual results. So these are two images we rendered um, of our chameleon dataset and one was done with the conventional volume path tracing. We use next event estimation here to improve convergence and improve the noise. And the other image was created with our hybrid renderer that we discussed earlier. And it renders only a single bounce of direct light and then creates the photon field for global illumination, like we discussed. So as you can see, the results are pretty close matches. Let's look uh, and see them up close. And here we also have some error plots. And we do see some errors here. Uh, they are for a good part caused by the bias of the photon density estimate slight variations in how we scale the photon en energy uh, compared to the scene scale, and most notably, the number of photons traced in the volume. In the paper, we show more plots regarding this limitation, and we also show that the neural representation is actually surprisingly good at matching the photon trace, with the obvious downside of uh, also learning all the flaws. At the same time, we can achieve close to four times speed up in our renderer compared to the path tracer, and when we only consider the timings for generating the global illumination component, we see more than 12 times speed up uh, on this data set. And for other data sets that we tested, we achieve similar numbers, and you can find those in the paper and the supplemental. Another neat effect of learning the photon cache is that we get to trade some accuracy for significantly less variance, especially at low sample rates. So here's a progression of shots from the Chameleon dataset rendered at one SPP, four, eight, and then fully converged, um, which was around uh, 1024 SPP. And these were made with uh, the next event estimation path tracer. Now here are the same shots rendered with the hybrid method using the photon fields. Immediately we get less noise. And if you look at the numbers, we do even better than using respectively double or even quadruple the amount of samples. This effect obviously is the most prevalent in regions that receive almost no direct light uh, and uh, are heavily lit by indirect light contribution. And this already brings us towards the end of my talk. Let's discuss limitations. The quality of the photon field depends to a large part on the underlying conditions, such as the number of photons that we trace or how granular the non-isotropic scattering is trained. Another important factor is the photon density estimator used to gather photons for training. We use a very basic technique for this work, and this can definitely be improved by implementing more advanced techniques. Next, the tracking we used uh, to trace the photons has some limitations for uh, photon mapping. And this is the case for uh, low density regions in volumes, and especially so when those are combined with large majorants in the volume and strong directional scattering. There are many cases where there are insufficient interactions in the medium and those regions then lose a lot of details due to the lack of photons. To summarize, we introduce a radiance cache modeled as a neural field, which we title Photon Field. A photon field is trained on photon maps, traced at varying phase function scattering settings, and using the trained photon fields, we can produce global illumination effects on average 10 times faster than a baseline path tracer. The representations produce less stochastic noise and can model non-isotropic scattering behavior in real time. And with this, I want to thank you for listening and I hope to see you at VIZ.